Hello, dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between, and welcome to this, not a one, not a three, but a two-torial. I'm your host, Jesse Kester, and today we are talking about the God Bless It ATEM Mini Pro. Specifically, we're talking about how to get a signal from a microphone that requires phantom power through a device that delivers phantom power into the ATEM Mini Pro and onto a hard drive that is live recording the performance so that as soon as we press stop, we can run over to the computer and upload it to the streaming service of our choice. Sound good? Sound good? Sound good? Uh, okay, let's get into it. I'm sorry. We're going to follow this workflow as... Uh, as the audio moves through its stream. And as we go, we're going to talk about what works about it and what the limitations are, but we're going to start with the microphone. Now, this microphone does require phantom power. Um, and if we were just doing a single monologue, I'd be running this microphone straight into the into the black magic, XLR out from the microphone, XLR in on the black magic, and we know that XLR is a good format for audio because XLR is excellent. Yes! It works, I promise you. Please believe me that it works. Uh, the reason we're not doing that is because we want this workflow to be scalable. We don't just want to plan for one audio signal. Using something like a Zoom H6, you can plan for up to six audio signals. And if you're doing something like a podcast, you really want more than just yourself. I promise you, you really just want more than just yourself. And this is, this is a scalable workflow. Now, there is a cost to this. If we were doing that direct through the camera, XLR to Blackmagic, to the ATEM, we'd be taking out one generation of conversion. So we'd have this analog signal that comes from the microphone, goes into the Blackmagic, becomes digital, and then is fed through the HDMI into the ATEM Mini Pro. That would be nice. But we want more tracks. So we're using a Zoom H6 which means we're going to be doing analog out. Yes, there is a digital out option on the Zoom H6. You could run a USB from the H6 into a laptop. The problem with that is there is nothing simple or efficient about that because you'd have to run it through the laptop, run it through software on the laptop, and then run it out via HDMI from the laptop to the editor. And that doesn't simplify anything. We want a very, very easy to plug and play workflow so that when everyone's in the room and ready to record, you just have to press record. We don't want to have to be waiting on software clicking and updating and restarting the computer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're um, taking the USB out off the table for the Zoom, which leaves us with the headphone out or the line out. I will not use the headphone out, and I'm going to tell you why. Because the headphone out is a variable signal uh, jack. You can turn the volume up, you can turn the volume down. The ATEM, I have noticed, is the most sensitive to clipping device that I have ever used in my many, many years on this planet. This thing will clip sooner than any other device I have ever used. I don't know if you've had the same experience. If you have, Hit me up with a comment down below so I feel vindicated in my frustration. If you haven't, double please hit me up with a comment down below so that I can know that I'm a buffoon who's using the device incorrectly. Anyway, I do feel like it is very sensitive to clipping, and that's why I like to send it as controlled a signal as humanly possible. Line out is always going to be sending at the same level. Whatever your microphones are, that can change, but the line out level will always be the same, so the ATEM knows what it's getting, and I really, really like that. Before we send it out, let's talk a little bit about where I keep my levels on the zoom. I like to keep them below negative 18 and negative 12 decibels. There's a reason for this. Negative 18 is far away, far enough away from the noise floor that I'm not worried about any digital noise or any of the room tone kind of overpowering my voice. Negative 12 is far away, far enough away. Boy, am I bad at saying that sentence. Negative 12 is far enough away from the noise ceiling of zero decibels that I'm not worried about clipping on the device. I worry enough about clipping on the ATEM, I don't want to have to worry about clipping on the Zoom either, so knowing that my voice is going to peak at around negative 12 decibels means that I'm in no risk of, of clipping, and that's good. That means that we can kind of set it and forget it with the Zoom, and at this point we can move merrily over to the ATEM. I want to do a quick refresher on what all of these buttons are, it's only going to take a minute. Um, You've got four buttons for your microphone inputs. You've got on and off, 
on means it's on and off means uh, you didn't hear what I said, and that was proving my point of what I was saying. These are volume up and down. I'm not going to touch them because I have them where I like them. And as Will Smith said, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. Moving down to the audio buttons that, um, that go with the video signals. Now, the video is very easy. If you want a camera one, you push one. If you want camera two, you push two, three, four, and back to one. Uh, the, the audio, for how limited audio is on the ATEM, they sure do have a lot of buttons. Let's go over what they are, volume up, volume down, off and on. Then you've got reset, which wouldn't you know it, resets that channel. And AFV. AFV stands for audio follows video. So if I were to turn this on, I'm going to take my headphones off for this demo because it's really annoying when you're trying to do it in real time. It'll be annoying enough for you to hear it, and we're going to burn through it so you know what's going on. All right, so if we were to turn this on, on you'd hear two, two signals, signals, one from the Zoom, Zoom and, and one, one from the mic, mic that, that I'm speaking, speaking into. into. If we were to turn that off, then it's just the signal from the mic that I'm speaking into. Uh, if we were to turn on AFV, audio follows video, you would, you would hear, hear this, this audio, audio when, when I'm cut, cut to, to the, the GoPro, GoPro, but if I cut to the black magic, suddenly the GoPro is silent. Hearing, hearing the, the GoPro, GoPro, not hearing the GoPro. Uh, we're going to go, go back, back and turn that off. Now you know what AFV does. It's a good little button to know what it does. And that pretty much covers it for your audio options on the ATEM Mini Pro's face. But wait, there's more! The ATEM has so much going on under the hood. I implore you, if you have not plugged your ATEM into a laptop with the software installed, please do so. You will find out that there are millions of little features and options. Well, maybe not literally millions, but a lot that you can get into. And we're going to get into that right now as we cut to the desktop software. Quick, quick down and dirty introduction of what you're seeing left to right. Cams one and two are the GoPros. There's camera one, there's camera two. Uh, we have the audio off for both of those. If it were on, you'd see a little red light and you'd hear the audio echoing as we do right there. Uh, we're gonna leave both of those off camera. Three is the black magic. The black magic is set to XLR in. So even if I turn that audio on or off, you aren't hearing anything because there's no audio there's no XLR in on the Blackmagic, it's picture only right now, which is fine. Camera four is the laptop that you're looking at right now. The audio track is on, you can see that by the red light at the top, blink, blink, blink. I'm gonna leave it on because this is what we use for music and drops on our podcasting. And that's it for the camera settings. Moving over to mic one, this is where the real action is happening. First thing you'll notice is that all of the cameras are set to zero decibels. The mic one is set to negative 19 dB. Again, the ATEM is very fast to clip. So we turned that way, way, way down so that we wouldn't have clipping issues coming in from the zoom. Moving down, you will see that while there is nothing graphic going on over here, there are some lines here. Let's get into what this is because this is where it gets really exciting. What we've got here are the compressor and the limiter. So you can have these turned on as you're recording. This is, this is built-in compression and limiting software. I'm going to turn them off so you can hear what this microphone sounds like without compression and without limiting. So now you notice that my voice is totally different. It's much more pillowy. It's much softer. It's kind of harder to hear that those crisp, detailed edges. But if we turn the compression and the limiting back on, that brings the, the voice really to the front. You've got some kick to it. You've got some bite. you got some punch. you got some grit and gristle. Isn't that what we want? Yes. Yes, it is. The question was rhetorical. Moving on. If you haven't used a compressor, the, the plug-in can be a little intimidating because you've got these five things that you don't really know how they fit together. And then you've got the limiter on top of that, which is four more settings that you don't really know how they relate to each other. Good news, I'm going to explain it, and I'm going to explain it quickly, and then you're going to understand it, and you'll be able to use compression and limiting for the rest of your life with information. You don't have to rely on presets anymore after this quick tutorial. So let's get into it. Threshold. This is the knob that affects um, the level at which your audio will start being affected by the compressor. Right now I have it set to negative 30 decibels. That means everything above negative 30 decibels will be affected by the compressor. Everything below negative 30 will not be affected by the compressor. If I were to turn this up to negative 10, that would mean much less audio is being affected by the compressor. If you recall, I like to hang out between negative 18 and negative 12, so at negative 30, 
pretty much everything I'm saying is being affected by the compressor, which is fine with me because our ratio is low. Right now we're using a two to one compression ratio. Here's what that means. It will cut in half any audio above negative 30 decibels. So if I'm at 10 decibels above negative 30, it will lower that signal down to five decibels above negative 30. If I'm at 20 decibels above negative 30, it'll lower that to 10. You see how that two to one works? 10 becomes five, 20 becomes 10, 15 would become seven and a half. You're just cutting it in half, really. So you've got all these dynamics and you don't wanna bring them all down at the same time. That would be normalizing and that won't really make your audio sound any crispier. So you wanna take the loudest stuff and bring it down. You wanna, what's the word, compress it. Now what this does is it brings the volume of all your audio down. That's why we have this over here, the makeup slider. This will bring it back up. So we've got our audio, we're bringing it down. We don't want the signal to be quiet. We want it to be hanging out at final broadcast between negative six and zero decibels because that's where people are comfortable listening. We don't want our audience to have to crank up their speakers to max just to hear us talking. To give you an idea of what these settings will do to your voice, let's adjust them a little bit, just for a moment, and then we'll go back to our original settings. So if I were to take this from negative 30 to negative 15, ooh, better back off there. You see how we're clipping already? We'll leave that at negative 15, and we're gonna bring this down a little bit. So what's happening is this is affecting less of the audio. It's only affecting the signal at negative 15.9 and above, which between negative 18 and negative 12, that's about half of my voice is being compressed. And it's still doing it at a two to one compression ratio. So it's sounding a little bit closer to the version without, sounding a little bit closer to this. Let's get that going back up. Um, but let's, let's crank the compression just so you can hear what happens when we do that. All right, so we've got the compression at 17.2, but it's not sounding that bad because it's only doing massive amounts of compression on the loudest things I say. What I'm going to do now is bring the threshold back down to negative 30, and then we're going to bring that makeup back up. Close is good enough. Good enough for government work. Now we're going to bring this back up so that it's... Um, the final output is hanging out between negative six and zero, and you hear that my voice is much more compressed. It doesn't sound natural at all. If you were talking to somebody and this is what their voice sounded like, you would worry that they were Jesse Eisenberg or something like that. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna leave this at negative 30. All right, and we're gonna take this back down to two to one, because that's a nice clean compression. Two to one, negative 30. And we've got to bring this makeup down because I feel like we're getting clippy again. There we go. Now we're now we're comfortable. All right. So that's what the threshold and the ratio, that's how they relate to each other. Let's move down to the attack, the hold, and release. Attack is how quickly the compressor starts affecting your audio once it crosses that threshold that you've set. Release is how slowly it stops affecting that audio once it goes back down below the threshold. And a hold is a bit of time that it will hold, that uh, it, will, it will keep engaging the compressor even though you've gone back down below the threshold. So let's just do some changes on this so you can hear how, how different it can be. We're gonna crank that attack up a lot and I don't know, wouldn't you just, wouldn't you just like hate to have to listen to something like this for too long? It feels like too, it feels too aggressive to me. The attack feels really like uh, every word is kind of burrowing into my ears whether I like it or not. So I'm going to bring that down. I like to leave the hold on zero because you want it to be as, as, you want it to be moving with your audio as efficiently as possible. I don't need to hold it. Moving over to the, li the, the limiter, I just set this at negative six and leave it there. I like to kind of leave the, leave the limiter, set it and forget it. And that is compression and limiting and how those things relate to each other. Are we good? I think we're good. So now you know how to get your signal from a microphone that requires phantom power through all these devices and also through the software in its, in its long and winding journey to a hard drive. And the thing is, since, since the audio is coming pre-compressed, all I have to do is press the stop button and then I can run over to YouTube and upload this video so 
at the beginning of this video's journey to YouTube is at the end of your journey to learning how all of this fits together. And isn't that like a wild fourth dimensional ride that we took together? If you liked it, y you should like it. If you want more videos like this, you should subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you want to tell me what a, what a dang fool I am, there's a comment section below. And I love to hear from the haters, you guys. You're what keep me going. I wore this sweater just for y'all today, so uh, let, 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 let the hate begin. You know what? I, I take that back. I, I'm bad at outros. Bye!